Okay, Bruce Lee fans, so Charles Damiano has requested that I do this video. I'm no expert like he is, but I want to introduce a very special guest that came to my house today. He took a five hour drive, and this man is pretty much legendary in the world of collecting. Um, especially for us old heads that started out way out in the 70s, we'll remember Mr. Darren Walt. Pleasure to, for you to come to yeah, see my collection. It's Pleasure awesome to see you. To see um, everything for those of you that don't know this guy, He's the author of this magazine, this book, um, in his, in his uh, Robert Blakeman's collection. He had the privilege of working alongside Robert Blakeman back in the 70s. And if everybody remembers, Robert Blakeman was the one that used to do Bruce Lee Eve and promote Bruce Lee, uh, one of the early pioneers. So now that I have him here, finally was able to meet him after speaking to him for a few years. I'm going to ask him some questions for you fans so you can get inside the mind and the works of Robert Blakeman and Bruce Lee Eve. Well, again, it's a pleasure to meet you, you too, and sir. I want to ask you a few questions. How did you meet Robert Blakeman, and how did you become friends with him? Um, met Robert actually in uh, 1985. I saw a, uh, a uh, advertisement or a pamphlet for a, a writer's group actually called the Writer's Grapevine in Columbus, Ohio, and they had uh, a little write-up about Robert in there and that he was in uh, Bruce Lee. and. I was looking for a writer's group anyway, so mm -hmm. so that's how I met him, and yeah, you know, we both had interest in Bruce Lee, so. Okay, so who was Robert Blakeman? Explain to the fans that don't know, the newer fans that don't know him from, from when we were coming up as, as Bruce Lee fans and collectors. Explain to them who Robert Blakeman was and what he stood for as far as Bruce Lee. He was one of the biggest collectors in the world, I guess, at that time. You know, it's, it's hard to tell exactly because there was no internet and then you know but mm -hmm. uh he was probably within the top five at that time in the in the 70s and 80s and uh he it was coming up on uh the 10th year anniversary of bruce lee's death in 83 and he really kind of noticed that nobody was really talking about mm, okay it. and i mean us bruce lee fans knew about it mm -hmm. you know from mm -hmm. magazines or whatever but right. he was kind of afraid that um, he was venturing into something that nobody was interested in anymore. Maybe? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. like 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 Bruce's memory was going to fade. Right. So he decided to um, have an event at his house. He called it Bruce Lee Eve, mm -hmm. and he invited friends over. So that's what originated in his house. Yeah, okay. at his house, and he pulled all his collection out and mm -hmm. set it up all over his house. Mm -hmm. and he even printed up, you know, a little program and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's when you have all these. Uh, <laughs> He was uh, kind enough to bring two binders full <laughs> of all kind of uh, magazine articles and letters from Robert Klaus and Richard Torres and just all kind of memorabilia packed into two of these books. I was amazed. I mean, we, we've been going through my collection now for past, past what, four hours? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was amazed when I was looking at all this stuff that he had in this book. Uh, he bought two big books full of stuff. I mean, I'm talking about from nuts to bolts. I mean, you've got pictures in there from the theaters, from the long lines that people used to go see uh, 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 Robert Blakeman's collection, uh, photos of exhibitions, photos with Richard Torres and Larry Hartzell. I mean, jam-packed with stuff. I mean, I'm probably, I, I would like to tie him up and just keep this stuff here, <laughs> be honest with you, because it's so nice. It's beautiful stuff that he's kept, a timeline of all that stuff that went on uh, during the 80s when Robert Blakeman was trying to uh, promote Bruce Lee. Yeah. Um, so, how did he get hooked on Bruce Lee and why do you think he did? Uh, he remembered seeing Bruce Lee from the Green Hornet. Okay, okay, how and most of us did when he was a kid. Yeah. Okay. There are many legendary figures of evil in the Orient. Some people say they are often driven back to action by their own malevolence. He is back! The legendary Bruce Lee as Kato, the Green Hornet's trusted sidekick. Masked menace of the martial arts. If you're looking for action, he's the one to find it. Bruce Lee is Kato in The Green Hornet. Okay. So he he started, you know, he didn't really start collecting there at that time. Um, but... Uh, 
once he saw Enter the Dragon. That was it. Like all of us. Yeah, yeah. 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 same, same okay. kind of typical story. Right. So then, you know, he did Bruce Lee Heave at his house for a couple of times, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. uh, he decided to take a bigger <laughs> venue, and then so we, then we did it uh, in 86 and 87 at a, at a movie theater. I, I don't know a lot about his financial, but he must have been well off to be able to rent movie theaters at that time to bring fans in. Um, um, no, he didn't rent them. He, no? he, the deal was that the, the theater would get all the revenue just from they showed okay. him the dragon oh they so. would show the movies yeah. he would bring in the fans he was set up in the theater yeah i did something like that for dragging the bruce lee story they gave me the posters and all that for just bringing the fans in i set up a little thing in the lobby which was pretty nice yeah so robert set up his collection in the in the lobby mm -hmm. and uh and the, the the fans came in we had martial arts demonstration lion dances um and then showed the uh showed uh you know a bruce lee movie mm -hmm. so so was it like a question and answer after they saw the movie or before the movie or? Um, yeah, you know, before the movie. Did they get to touch the memorabilia or that was, was he there to explain? Yeah. Everything? Okay. Yeah, okay. especially in the later years mm -hmm. when, because uh, uh, then he went back to his home for a few years having it mm -hmm. uh, just for friends and family and stuff, and then uh, he started working at a at a uh, video store. And he would have the event there. Right, I saw all the pictures in those books. Yeah. Like the video store setups and everything. And that's when he could really interact with the... Gotcha. Well, he inter always interacted with, with the crowd, but that's where he... So where did he get the collectibles back at that time? I mean, now we have eBay. Yeah. And at that time, I know I was just trying to trade with other collectors and things like that. So where did he manage to get all those collectibles well, back Well, obviously, then? he was trading with other people. Well, he talked to you, you know, too. Right, right. So, so mm -hmm. he was trying to trade. Basically, he did what... All the collectors did back then is you went to uh, you went to memorabilia shows, you went to flea markets. You um, well, okay. he was in contact with Norman Barine, who used to ran, run something Good called. Good friend of mine that helped me out too. Yeah, and uh, that's all the letters from Norman. Yeah, he interacted with Norman. So yeah. you could you could get stuff from there. Mm -hmm. You know, advertisements in the magazines. Just and I saw he was in several Inside Kung Fu black belts. He would they would advertise Bruce Lee was coming and stuff like that. Yeah, he he was real proud of the fact that. Bruce Lee got mentioned in like how many years USA did, did Bruce Lee? Today. Yeah, in USA Today. Mm -hmm. uh, how many years did that go on for? Um, there was six in public, if, and then uh, seven in private. But mm -hmm. in 1988, uh, Richard Torres did it in New York. Right, I've seen pictures of that, and I saw pictures inside of there. Uh, and what he was did it that a, you guys had Larry Hartzell and all these other guys there? Was yeah, that the one in New York. No, no, uh -huh. oh. no. That was that was the one in Columbus. Okay. And uh, yeah, we had Larry Hartzell and uh, George Dillman. Mm -hmm. I saw the pictures. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, so so that he that, was that able was to really draw cool. from some of the celebrities back in them days, some of the top martial artists and people like Richard Torres, who was into studying uh, Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, yeah. And, and draw from uh, so Jesse cool. Glover, I guess, was was invited to one of those. Yeah. And appeared. Yeah. So it was nice when we were trying to promote it, and we got in contact with you know even Robert Klaus. Mm -hmm. I talked to him on the phone. Yeah, that I was saw really the letters. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, letters from him. And Richard came out from New York, so mm -hmm. I got to meet him. Um, and we became good friends. So um, it, it's the you know the camaraderie that uh, Bruce Lee uh, fans have for each other, and, and again, like you say, us old heads is just mm -hmm. you know just amazing, and it's amazing that it's lasted this long. What do you think inspired Robert to, to even take on something like that? I mean, was it just Bruce jumped off the screen like he did to all of us, and he just got inspired to, hey, I'm gonna start collecting on this guy? Yeah, he he was impressed with, with Bruce's charisma. Okay. Um, that aura he had, you yeah. just away from it. He just jumped off the screen. It wasn't and like your regular chop socket movies. I mean, Bruce jumped off the screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bruce was... So was, he ever talked to you about what inspired him as far as, you know, to start actually collecting? Because, I mean, back then, you figure... Um, I, I, I suppose Richard Torres was collecting at that time because I remember he used to put out some catalogs. Um, and I was just a, a, a tiny lad doing the collecting thing. I'd be a magazine here or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. came out. Um, but you had guys like Richard Torres, which were already amassing collections and making all the right moves with different people and martial artists. Um, so to, to see Robert Blakeman and Norman Marine just one day decide, hey, I want to start collecting everything that comes out on Bruce Lee, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of... Uh, 
crazy kind of thing. I mean, now it's natural. Everybody that's a Bruce Lee fan has something, whether it be posters, videos, uh, albums, like uh, 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 Hector Martinez, he loves to collect uh, soundtracks. Um, you know, he has his specialties that he collects. Mm -hmm. uh, Cosetta Stokes collects soundtracks and paper items. I collect just about a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, you know, and you got guys all over the place. You got Dave Love in England, and, and, and you got Peter Reynolds, and you got all these different people. You got Rudy Lambs in Florida, who's also a Jeet Kune Do instructor. And I mean, we all collect vast majority of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but then you got the guys like Richard Torres and Rudy Lamps and those guys that actually practice Jeet Kune Do and actually teach it, mm -hmm. which I think is, is great. I mean, to be able to go that route. You exactly. Know? But uh, did Robert Blakeman ever take martial arts? Yeah, he did Taekwondo for about a year or so. Okay, okay. And, uh, and I think I saw some pictures of uh, you guys were practicing a one-inch punch or sticky hands or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He also did have a birthday event for Bruce Lee mm -hmm. um, at his house. And uh, uh, some of the guys from my... Uh, martial arts club mm -hmm. that I was teaching at at the time came and uh, my Wing Chun, Wing Chun instructor came and so we yeah we were we were doing some chi sao and stuff so <laughs> so um what year did, did uh, Robert Blakeman pass um 2001 2001 <clears throat> yeah okay. he was only 45 years old wow I say so and, and what do you think happened to to that enormous collection that he had what what eventually happened to that did, did it go to other collectors or yeah it was eventually it it went to his partner at the time, and mm -hmm. then uh, his partner actually ended up passing away tragically. And it, mm. so his sister uh, sold the collection to actually Robert's uh, Taekwondo instructor, <laughs> and they uh, they ended up showing the they did some events where they they set up the collection and stuff. And, and uh, I didn't know about them beforehand because I would have liked to gone. Mm. It would be nice to see if they had anything about Robert there, you know, or if they just kind of left Robert out. Um, which is, which is, you know, I th thank you, Charles, and, and you for doing this, because um, it's been a few years since I've talked about this event, and, you know, a lot of people probably don't, haven't even heard about it. Right, your newer collectors probably haven't heard too much about Norman Boreen or Robert Blakeman, but they were the pioneers. They were the ones that opened the doors for all of us, I mean, to, to inspire us to collect. I mean, I talked to Robert only one time, uh, on the phone, he wanted to buy a couple of my statues, and of course, I I gave him an outrageous price because I didn't <laughs> want to sell them. You know, I mean, I'm new to the world of collecting, and I got something that I don't think I could ever get again. So mm -hmm. I said, you know, give me three thousand bucks, and he was like, oh, you know. So, <laughs> so I was like glad that he didn't have the three thousand bucks with yeah. I was like, oh, okay, now I just told him I was selling my statues. So um, it would it would be interesting if he was alive today to see how much has progressed. I mean, yeah. you figure back when when he was alive. Um, we were just talking about this earlier. These little Largo toys were probably what was in fashion at that time. What was just coming of age? They, these came out about '83, um, and now you've got things you know that that just blow you away with the resemblance yeah. and, the, and, and the detail. Of course, you know this probably was two bucks back then, <laughs> and now some of these statues can run you four or five hundred dollars. You know, easy. Yeah. So, but you got you got to pay for the detail. Mm -hmm. So, I, it would be nice to see. You know, if Norman or Robert were still with, with us, how much they would have progressed, yeah. and how much they would have promoted Bruce nowadays. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I think he would have still been. You know, he, we were planning the next one when he when he passed away. Mm. And you said that. Um, after he passed, Richard Torres took the torch, or he was sick, and Richard Torres yeah. uh, did one in New York. Yeah, yeah, that was in that How was did in that develop? Um Well, we were, um, you know, in touch with Richard, and 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 um, did Robert tell him, "Hey, I'm ill. I won't be able to do it. Can you do it?" And well, yeah, Robert asked me to do it actually first if I would try to do it in Columbus. Well, my wife was nine months pregnant with twins, mm. or she was due like so you can pretty much it. on July twentieth. Right, and actually she had the kids on July thirteenth. Wow! So yeah, I wasn't I wasn't gonna, you know, try to take take that on. Uh, so Richard did it in New York, and he did a three day event. So mm. that was yeah. And, and I missed it because again, my wife was. It looked like it looked like it was a good event. Too. Yeah, it looked like it had a good turnout. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. so Robert Blakeman was in touch with Richard during that around that time. Yeah. Doing the collecting thing. Yeah. And all he did was reach out, and Richard took off with it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So so yeah. We, you know, it's a shame that we that. can't do even in this pandemic now. We can't do anything like that. I mean, I've tried to do something with the local museum, but because of the pandemic, I can't um, I can't do anything like that. I know in New York, uh, Hector Martinez has been in good connections, um, and he's done several uh, shows there. Uh, they did a big one. 
um, last year, year before. They had all kind of media there. He set up a big long table. They had celebrities there. It went all really nice. But because of this pandemic, I think we haven't been able to celebrate the anniversary of Bruce along the way. Yeah. But uh, it's a shame, you know. Yeah. But, but we still don't forget him. We still don't forget him. We don't forget guys like Robert Blakeman or, or Norman Marine. You know, I have fond memories of him. I never met Norman Marine. I used to, you know, talk with him two, three times a week. Mm. But a great guy, a great guy. I mean, yeah. You know, give you a shirt off his back. And he gave me a lot of nice collectibles that I still treasure. Um, so getting away from that, give me a little bit about your background as far as, you know, your martial arts background. So do you study martial arts or have you studied? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've done martial arts since I was since I was 13. Okay, okay. And uh, So you've only yeah. been at it a couple of years. You're yeah, 16 yeah. 16 now? 16? Yeah, okay, yeah okay. a couple of years. <laughs> right, turned 60. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, I started... Like all of us in Taekwondo? <laughs> Actually, uh, Shoren Ru. Shoren Ru? Okay. Yeah, it was, that was not, the, last the, the school that I could, uh, I could ride my bike to. Mm -hmm. And I uh, paid for it myself and everything. I had gotten jumped a couple times in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I said, well, enough of this. So, right. And then my dad ended up taking me to driving theaters. Okay. All through, so, you know how that, that was, it. That was it. You know, so my whole mindset became Jeet Kune Do as soon as. Well, I mean, you know. You didn't know anything about Bruce at that time. I didn't even know he was dead. I really didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the, the, the theater had handed out a poster that night. And I took it home and it in my closet. Yeah, you know. And then I must have saw him on a magazine or something. I said, wait, that's that guy in the, from the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wanted to know more and everything, but... You know, and then of course the explosion of things started coming out. You know, with Bruce on every martial arts magazine and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so, so big. Yeah, he's so big back then. But I mean. then I, so yeah, so I joined this school, and it, and it was a good school. They we were actually doing kickboxing then. Mm. Okay. Um, and so this was like '75, and Jeff Gripper was there. He was a, a, a ended up being a PKA middleweight champion. And that school ended up closing. The Shotokan, some Shotokan guys came in, so mm -hmm. I studied with them. Okay. And then. Did uh, you find a big difference in the styles? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you yeah. Again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then that's. I, it's funny, I like to say I never quit a martial arts, they, they, but a bunch of them quit me mm. because then that school closed after a year or so. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to test for brown belt, so that was frustrating. <laughs> but uh, and then where'd you go off from there? Um, then we moved to Illinois, and I was trying to find a place to train. Mm -hmm. Got some interesting stories of visiting schools and things. That, oh, really? Yeah, I need so to what, document. Was sometime. everybody actually acting like Bruce Lee at that time then, or uh, was not just going off still into so things? much? Yeah, so. still things were very traditional still. Okay. Because I found when um, I first started, it seemed like you always had one or two people in the class wanted to be Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to do the screens or the jumping around. and Yeah. You know. So through those several, kind of several years, I ended up just uh, working out with, uh, I was kind of doing a little class myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in my basement. But when, but when I went to college right after high school, uh, I found a club that uh, was very inspired by Bruce Lee. Okay. Um, called uh, Dojang Issue Club at Ohio State. It was a multi-art club, very much inspired by Bruce Lee. And we had a lot of stuff going on there, being a university club. Um, we did a lot of wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, um, Wing Chun. We had uh, Wing Ch uh, a guy who was a Wing Chun instructor that came in. Um, so, so I was there, I've been there for like, I was there for like 25 years, ended up teaching and all that. And, okay. Um, and now, uh, speaking with your girlfriend earlier, when she dropped you off, she says <laughs> that um, you're going to be doing something along the lines of uh, continuing your martial arts. Yeah, we moved from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina to Greenville, uh, South Carolina. and uh, Is so, there any, anything going on there with martial arts at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed martial arts have died down over the years, you know, especially yeah. with the pandemic. They don't want people around each other. And, no, Greenville's so, got a lot Greenville's of people got, that I okay. haven't met yet because we haven't... Uh, well, as far as other schools and stuff, there's some good schools in Greenville that I haven't met the, met the guys there yet, because um, you know, I haven't lived there that long. But right. yeah, I'm how long have you been in Greenville now? Uh, six months. Six months, and you get ready to set up something. Yeah, yeah we'll good. start off with a little garage thing. All right, and see all how right. that goes. Yeah. you know. But uh, sounds like you're following along those lines where Bruce started out in the garage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Not wrong yeah. with that. It's always always good to do. And what are you going to be trying to teach? Um. Basically, after do so many years, I mean, I 
I studied it's a combination of things. Yeah, you know, I studied modern Arnese for a while. Got into the Kessie fighting method. Okay. Two okay. or three years. So what I do now is kind of a, yeah, really a combination of things. Okay. I call it sticky boxing. Okay. Um, but it's it's it, you know my heart is is still Jeet Kune Do. I say I'm a Jeet Kune Do enthusiast. I mm -hmm. don't claim to teach Jeet Kune Do, but right. you, but you know, can follow one of the philosophies yeah, and, the, and the traditional uh, you know set ways or whatever yeah, you put out there. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean okay. that's that's the heart of it. The whole you know Bruce Lee's philosophy. I mean Bruce's whole thing was expressing yourself mm -hmm. and finding your own ignorance, right? And and teaching whatever you thought would work. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, it was a pleasure having you in my home. Yeah, awesome. Um, I know, like I said, we spent probably four and a half hours going through collectibles and looking at stamps and albums and a little bit of everything. And we had a blast, and we still didn't get to see it all. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm and hoping it was... to see you again soon. Come back by, by, and we can just spend the day just going through stuff. And yeah. Pulling out the, all the magazines and exactly. all that stuff. Exactly. But it was a pleasure having you. In, and and th these two binders you have. Uh, incredible, incredible. Yeah, and I just um, yeah, just the way you have the timeline set up of from the time that he started out doing it to the time where you know he passed away. Um, it's incredible the way you, yeah. you, you followed that timeline. It's it's a nice story about you know the time of that era of of Bruce Lee just yeah, in general. What you know his influence and what people were doing. And I just want to say real quick too that you know Robert was a print, he worked in a print shop. And that's where, hence all that printing stuff. Came yeah, out. so fancy pamphlets. And, <laughs> oh yeah. So I really like that kind of thing. You know, the fan generated stuff I think is really interesting, which could mm -hmm. probably be another show sometime. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, about absolutely. Fan generated absolutely. stuff. So, but anyway, yeah. Thanks, Charles, and thanks you again. And, no problem. And let's keep pleasure. Bruce Lee's uh, memory alive, you know, that's like our job, I guess. Now. <laughs> it's up to us to continue what Robert and, and Norman started way back when, right? Exactly. Yes, well, it was sir. a pleasure having you at my home, and thank, thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. have safe travels going back. All righty. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yay! <laughs>